Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Desktop of December, where I'll be looking at a very obscure desktop called Meso, or Meso, I'm not really sure how it is pronounced. It is from the Symphony OS. And if you've got a blank look on your face right now, I'm thinking, what am I talking about here? Where is that from? Yeah, don't worry, I had never heard of it either. So I was looking at the GitHub page, and it's a lone developer working on the project. Now when I say a lone developer, I mean literally he is the only contributor to the project. It has been forked twice, the project, and it has been starred twice. So yeah, that is um, pretty much unheard of in terms of popularity. So I'm looking at two versions of the desktop here. We have version 17 alpha and version 15 beta. Hmm. A weird numbering here, but um, okay. <laughs> Currently the desktop is going through quite a rewrite. I was looking at it and it's being written now in Ruby and HTML5. Now the author has written a white paper, he calls it a grey paper really, but he's written this paper on the desktop and talking about the interface, how he was aiming to make it, the, the simplistic interface to a user desktop. And he's talked about the way he's watched people make so many mistakes in an operating system within like the first few minutes of using it. So he talks about creating four hot corners, literally utilising the corners of the system. Now when I'm looking at the desktop version 15 beta, it seems to correspond with his white paper. But then looking at the newer version, it doesn't really. So we're gonna take a bit of a look at both of them. Now I have to say, neither of them particularly work well. Uh, the, the version 17 was certainly the hardest one to get going. There's not particularly much software with the systems. I'm sorry, it is like the basics, it is the desktop. So we're gonna concentrate literally on the desktop. That is all I've got to look at. Any applications you want to install on the system can kind of come from, well, third party really. It's like alternate applications that you'd find in the LXDE or GNOME desktop, but not the Qt desktop, not the KDE or anything. So let's take more of a look at it. So looking at the memory usage, first in version 17 alpha, we have 380 mega RAM in use. The desktop is based on open box and right clicking on the menu is what looks like the open box menu. The application launcher is in the top left hand side. We literally have the shortcuts to the icons. It's very dull background. It appears to be more from open box. On the right hand side, we have this plus icon. Now clicking it just seems to open Snaptic. Now, when I've tried putting in the root password, it, it just doesn't do anything and just say, yeah, starting up without root password. So that doesn't really work. So on the top right hand side here, we have what looks like the home folder. It doesn't really seem to work though. And we have a volume control, just the time there. That's kind of it really. I'll open a couple of applications just to sort of show you what they're like. So we have PC Man FM and Leafpad. So you can see we have the icon view there in the, I believe it is called the Menagerie taskbar. So yeah, it switches between them and yeah, just clicking on them, dragging it around, yeah, it doesn't really do much. So let's look at the other desktop. Now to look at the version 15 beta desktop and starting with the memory usage, we can see it's slightly higher at 390 mega RAM. So you can see here this desktop has the four hot corners. So on the top left hand side, we have the settings menu. There is a searcher on the top right hand side, but it doesn't seem to do anything though. If I just start typing, that doesn't do anything there. The launcher on the top right hand side is to the file manager. You'll notice here that the close, minimize, maximize buttons are offset and sort of further within the application. The reason becomes apparent though when you full screen it. You can see where the buttons are. So on the bottom right hand side we have the shutdown menu. And the bottom left hand side is the application launcher. Again, the text box there on top right hand side doesn't seem to do anything. In fact, it doesn't actually start typing until I've clicked on it. So no. Still doesn't really do anything. Also at the bottom of the screen we have a time and what should be the volume control and network manager, but we can only launch the network, which just takes me to uh, something I don't know because it uh, can only be launched this way by the look of it, the network connections. Ah, the NM connection editor. There. So launching applications, it's not the snappiest of uh, desktops, is it really? A little bit on the slow side. Now this is an older version of Debian. Was it Debian 7? That called Wheezy. 
Oh, resize an application. Come on. Oh, eventually. Come on, that's a little bit on the slow side, that is. Let's launch something else like GIMP. And let's chuck another application as well. Let's hit, so, Solitaire and Firefox. Come on, open everything. What is a bit strange, really, is just simply clicking on the application doesn't bring it to the front. What I found you need to do is double click on the application title bar to send it to the back. So you are double clicking it there. Seems to switch them around. The menagerie taskbar at the bottom of the screen there does have the switches. The switch between the applications there as well. Yeah, it's weird that it only moves if you select the title bar. And only in a very specific place on the title bar as well. I'm just almost messing with it, seeing where it actually brings it to the front. Another weird point to raise here, there's no Qt applications in this list. I installed Kate, Kwrite and Kdn Live. It's not that they don't exist on the system, because they do. Very strange. Never seen that before. LX Terminal, Kdn Live. It's installed, it's there. Why isn't it in the list though? In terms of errors that I've suffered with this desktop, the web server managed to crash on me at one point. Uh, this was when I was trying to get the video going to record this. And when the web server crashed, the whole desktop just crashed. So this is a difficult desktop to draw a conclusion on really because it's under development. What we're reviewing here in the version 15 doesn't appear to be the future of the desktop, but then again, it is the most usable and it is one at the front of the web page. I think we just have to say it is a specimen that can be looked at. Thanks for watching. See you all later.